Hey, welcome back everybody. We are having a huge update on pyrolutamide KX826, a new potential anti-heros treatment from the family of anti-androgens. I'm not going to be only giving you the latest updates, but also comparing the effectiveness of the treatment to what we already know, like minoxidil 5%, oral minoxidil 5 milligram, and finasteride 1 milligram. So you know what this new treatment KX826 is likely going to be able to deliver in terms of regrowing new hair on a square centimeter area compared to these other treatments you already know. So make sure you stay tuned and as always before we start shout out to our sponsor GoFiber. These are hair building fibers you can use to mask any thinning or patchy areas on your scalp to make your hair look thicker and better. So make sure you check out the link in the video description below where you can visit GoFiber, get a free sample of your choice and try them out. See if you like them. All right before I share with you the results of the second trial on pyrolutamide or KX826 and how effective the treatment actually was in terms of regrowing new hair. For all the new guys who don't know that treatment, we are already kind of in the last couple stages of that potential FDA approval of this treatment. We are reaching already the stage of the trial number three in China that will start happening very soon and after that the United States will follow. The first trial number one and two have been already accomplished where this treatment have been studied extensively for safety and efficacy. Now before I'm going to jump into the trial number two results on pyrolutamide, I would like to explain what is the difference between KX826 so-called pyrolutamide versus finasteride. If you look at the image above, you see how the Propecia is able to reduce the amount of DHT, dihydrotestosterone, in your scalp tissue and thus you will get lower miniaturization, less shedding and hair loss stabilization long term. However, KX826 or pyrolutamide, it's not not reducing the DHT levels in the scalp at all. As you can see here before and after they're remaining the same but what changes is there is like a blockade that the anti-androgen like pyrolutamide is able to do whenever DHT is trying to occupy the androgen receptor of the hair follicle. So it's pretty much like putting a blockade on that pathway so the damaging effect of the DHT cannot be expressed. Now let's go actually to the trial from the phase number two that actually uh, came out recently and the results could be seen on this Chinese website so you need a translator. I would like to thank uh, Follicle Thought website uh, which many of you guys already are following that was able to do the translation to English language. So the purpose of this study was to examine the pyrolutamide KX826 in treatment of Chinese adult male patients with androgenetic alopecia and all these patients were classified as Norwood 3, 4 and 5s. Now it was a multi-center randomized double-blind placebo-controlled phase 2 clinical trial and all of these 122 subjects I believe were pretty much divided into four groups, actually five. The first group was assigned to 2.5 milligram pyrolutamide uh, concentration that was diluted into a topical solution in a 0.25% correspondingly applied twice a day. The second group was assigned to a 5 milligram or 0.5% concentration of pyrolutamide applied once a day. Third group was assigned to a 0.5% concentration uh, pyrolutamide applied twice a day. And the last two groups were placebo groups and uh, in one group uh, it was applied once a day and in the other group was applied twice a day. What they were pretty much trying to observe was the target area hair counts improvement that means uh, how much more hair regrowth there was per one square centimeter and these pictures you can see here these are just for illustrational purposes just so we can imagine how they're kind of doing that. They're doing like photographic assessment and also self-assessment independent assessments from third parties but also assessment from people who are doing that assessment in the first place as well. They did the target area hair count and target area hair width measurements before and uh, obviously 6 weeks, 12 weeks, 18 weeks and 24 weeks after. And right now let's take a look at the results. Here we can already start seeing how the effectiveness of that pyrolutamide will be different based on how much uh, of a concentration will be applied. And we can notice that the most effective one was the 5 milligram or 0.5% applied twice a day. After this concentration there was the 2.5 milligram applied once a day. After that we can notice how that 2.5 milligram uh, 
pyrolutamide or 0.25% solution equivalent applied twice a day was about the same effective as 0.5% pyrolutamide applied once a day. And interestingly, we can also notice a, a pretty substantial target area hair count improvement in the placebo group uh, where the placebo solution was applied once a day. We see like 12% target area hair count improvement, which again uh, has been already shown several times in other studies like on the uh, low level laser therapy where they put a sham device on patient's scalp that was not supposed to induce any hair regrowth benefits, but the results were almost 11 or 12%, I believe. So this is not uh, unusual that the placebo effect is also so pronounced. So if we look at the graphic number two on the right, you can already see the net target area hair count improvement minus the placebo hair count improvements and uh, clearly the winner would be the 0.5% pyrolutamide solution applied twice a day. Now if we go to target area hair count after 6, 12 and 18 weeks and also 24 weeks we notice again that the clear winner, not as clear but definitely uh, obviously winning here is again the 0.5% solution of pyrolutamide applied twice a day and after that it would be the 0.5% solution applied once a day and 0.25% solution applied twice a day. Now we don't need to really dig into these lower solutions as much anymore in my opinion because it's clear that they will now choose the 0.5% solution as a winner that will be observed and extensively studied for safety and efficacy further in the trial number three. So I think the 0.25% 0.25% solution applied twice a day or once a day, it won't be even a subject of further examination anymore. Now, interestingly, if we look at the hair growth assessment that is being done by patient himself or a researcher who did that experiment and did the uh, tracking and photographic assessment and also a third party professional, we are noticing at least a 50% improvement in self-perceived hair growth. If we compare the subjects from before and after week 24, by the 0.5% solution, it's going from 56% onto 80%, for example. And also if we observe the assessment done by third-party professionals that had nothing to do with that experiment and were not really biased into seeing any outcome, they are actually, uh, the results of these observations are very pronounced. For example, in the 0.5% pyrolutamide group applied twice a day, we are seeing improvements in that third-party professional assessment going from 16% onto like 57%, which is almost three times as much if we observing, for example, the 0.5% solution applied twice a day. And this is pretty significant to me. So it was really obvious even to third party uh, professionals that this experiment really resulted in really good hair regrowth and obvious hair regrowth rates. Now. To give you some uh, more information about the safety, because most of you guys will probably be concerned about potential side effects because we are listening it from everywhere almost that topical antiandrogens are not supposed to, to come with any side effects related to your sexual or mental health, but mainly the sexual health. So also fortunately this study did not confirm any deleterious side effects uh, like for example uh, erection issues, libido issues and all these types of things. Only we have seen three cases of dose reduction reduction due to adverse events uh, and these were usually skin related like contact dermatitis by one person, grade 2 rash uh, and also grade 1 pru pruritus which are all skin issues that have nothing to do with some uh, more like deeper more serious systemic adverse events so that's very fortunate here. Now overall the main adverse event was uh, pruritus which is again just skin dryness and this induces like itching and it's related mainly to the potentially even the vehicle. I don't know what exactly they used as a vehicle for applying that uh, KX826. So all these things could have really led to all these adverse events related to the skin. So that's very good that it didn't uh, lead to any deaths or any additional serious adverse events.
Now, as far as the conclusion, guys, as I mentioned, they chose the 0.5% concentration because it was the ideal concentration in terms of inducing the most uh, potent hair regrowth per square centimeter, but also the best hair thickness after 24 weeks compared to the other concentration. And also the application of twice a day seems to be the best. Overall, the 0.5% concentration applied twice a day resulted in a net improvement in target area hair count of 15.34 hairs per square centimeter after 24 weeks. Now I know that you have probably already seen some results like 22 plus percent target area hair count from some results like some guys already posted it online. Uh, also some YouTubers who did like uh, like leaked results from the second trial where they were, the value was much higher but this wasn't the net target area hair count improvement but it was gross. That means that they did not subtract the placebo results from that value uh, because that's how we come on to that net uh, target area hair count. We also have seen it already on the low level laser therapy studies where they like to kind of brag about like 14.2% target area hair count improvement like the iRestore helmet uh, was able to induce but then in the other study they were uh, studying a also a sham device which is a laser helmet which does literally nothing to you and it was also uh, kind of inducing a 11.8% target area hair count improvement so in such case we are kind of ending up with like 2.5% 4% net improvement in hair coverage or target area hair count for low level laser therapy. This is kind of like the sneaky trick or misinterpreting of studies done by many companies like low level laser treatment companies that like to make their helmets more powerful than they are actually in uh, real life. If we compare now minoxidil finasteride and pyralutamide uh, KX826, what will win? Maybe you have asked. Now, what I I can tell you here we don't have ideal values for this comparison because for example oral minoxidil have never been tested on a placebo controlled uh, kind of fashion we have only some observational studies and cohort studies so there is no placebo group involved unlike with topical minoxidil and finasteride one milligram so let me give you an approximations here as best as i was able to find so if we look at pyrolutamide after six months we are getting more than 22 percent uh, gross target area hair count improvement and net target area hair count improvement of 15.3% in six months. If we go to oral minoxidil, that is uh, experimental treatment that some doctors are prescribing off-label and you can definitely try it out at your own risk if you want. Uh, however, if we compare it to pyrolutamide, we actually see that it's inferior in terms of uh, target area hair count improvement in percentages on a gross base. It's only 19% after six months. So here pyrolutamide seems to be definitely at least as potent as oral minoxidil 5 milligram. And bear in mind that 5 milligram oral minoxidil is pretty high dose. It's considered as low dose, but it's actually a pretty, um, you know, side effect unfriendly dose in my opinion, because it's pretty high. So if you're taking like one milligram or two milligram of oral minoxidil, chances are the net target area hair count improvement will be definitely Definitely less than 15% what is going to be able to be achieved with pyrolutamide. Now compared to topical minoxidil 5% based on studies that were kind of researching topical minoxidil for up to one year we have seen about 18 to 20 percent gross target area hair count improvement and a net target area hair count improvement of about 14 to 16 percent after one year uh, so that's similar uh, compared to pyrolutamide as well as finasteride seems to have about the same target area hair count improvement of about 14 to 3 percent after one year so here i would conclude that yes pyrolutamide seems to be acting more quicker compared to finasteride in terms of regrowing new hair per square centimeter but the new question that I have will be like how long term of a treatment will that pyrolutamide be if we kind of track the target area for a year two or five years will it still maintain be able to maintain the effectiveness or will the results of of topical antiandrogens fade over time a little bit as it is the case with minoxidil that tends to 
peak in terms of efficacy and target area hair count regrowth some somewhere between week number 20 and week number 24 and after that it kind of starts fading so will the same happen to a pyrolutamide user i don't know i certainly want to try it out once it's going to be out and add it into my protocol so this was pretty much everything i wanted to share with you if you enjoyed this video make sure you like and drop a comment below what do you think about this treatment will it be better than finasteride or minoxidil or not how are your thoughts? Let me know below. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I'm going to be seeing you soon in another video. Take care.